Hello everyone. Welcome back to another Saturday Anything Goes. I hope that you're having a great weekend. Um, I'm having a fabulous weekend because my granddaughters are here visiting. So I have Miss Maggie and Miss Eden. Say hi ladies. Hi. <laughs> and one of the projects that we worked on today was the advent calendar. I uh, When I saw this in the uh, holiday catalog, I knew it would be something perfect to do with uh, my granddaughters. And we just had the best time doing it. We used a lot of the things that are included, but we also used some extras, like some die cuts of the polar bears and the deer. So we had a lot, a lot of fun with this. And it was very easy to do, did not take us long. So it comes in a nice sturdy box and you've got the 25 different compartments. When you pull it out, there's where you put your treats. And one of the great things is, now we just decorated one side, but you could also turn it around and say decorate it for Halloween or Easter or even countdown to a special day like a birthday. Um, so if you haven't gotten the advent calendar yet, I think it definitely is a good buy. All right, but enough about that. What I wanted to talk about was our project for tonight. A friend of mine posts inspirational pictures daily on her Facebook page, and most of them are landscapes. So when this one popped up, it was a beautiful moonlit landscape. It actually had uh, some chairs on a beach too, I think. But I knew that waterfront was going to be absolutely perfect to uh, recreate it. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to get inky. There's some brayering that's going to go on and we're just going to have a lot of fun. Hi, Angie. Thanks so much for joining. So we're going to use waterfront. We'll also use rooted in nature. And my card base is Knight of Navy. And um, it is a top folding card, but instead of being four and a quarter by five and a half, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. I really wanted a lot, a lot of room to do this landscape. Our mat is going to be smoky slate. And then I did use a piece of whisper white for the design panel. So let me bring in my goodie box here. I already have the pieces and parts ready. And when I said we were going to get inky, I meant it. We'll be using Daffodil Delight, I know, right, for a nighttime sky. You'll see in a minute. Uh, Pacific Point, I thought was great for the night sky. And Night of Navy for the water. And then for the actual little highlights, the little stars in the sky and the highlights on the trees and mountains, I'm going to show you how to use a little paintbrush and your Whisper White to get that effect. And Miss Winnie just popped in. If you hear any crunching noises, her dog bowl is right below my desk because we didn't want little Miss Foster getting in it uh, out in the living room where we usually have it. Okay, I'm going to keep this one up here just for reference, but piece of Whisper White. This is cut at, what's it cut at? Four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Um, that way we just have a narrow room for a border. And I need to get a piece of paper out because, like I said, we're going to get inky. So I need, we're going to be going off the page. Come on, you. I keep my paper underneath and it does not want to cooperate. There we go. Would you put that on the floor for me, hon? Thank you. As you can see, that's what I mean. I got really inky making this. Okay. So the first thing that I did was figure out where I wanted my moon. And that is an important first step because you have to mask that area. If I bring this up here, and I'll zoom in a little bit in a minute, but if I bring that up, you can see I have a little circle that's actually a hole puncher uh, that I punched out of masking paper and uh, or masking tape, and that will keep that area from getting any of the darker colors. All right, let me see if I can zoom you guys in. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Karen. All right, 
And here we go. As I do want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Pull this down. There we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is I am going to lay in my sky. And if you notice, I have a really nice, nice line that uh, defines or separates the night sky from the water. And I got that just by using some good old tape. So I'll decide where I want it to be. And I'm also using the grid marks on my grid paper to help me get it straight. And I need quite a bit of water, but I also need quite a bit of sky because we certainly don't want our mountains sinking into the water. So I think I'll do it right about there. And I, you'll notice that I cut my tape long, and that's because this keeps me, when I'm using the brayer, this won't move around a lot. I learned that the hard way. Okay, so now I'll open up our Pacific Point. Let me move some of these out of the way and bring in my brayers. Now, I bought these, oh gosh, six months ago and really had not used them very much. But, oh my goodness, I am loving them. So, this is the one I used for my um, Pacific Point. And this is the one I used for my Knight of Navy. If you've never brayered before... When you take and uh, put the ink on your foam pad, you don't want to go back and forth. You want to go in one direction. And it's not going to look like there's a lot of ink there, but just, just like you would if you were painting using one of those foam rollers, that's what we're doing. All right, so, and then I'm going to go right here just to make sure that's what I want. Yep, and back and forth motions going off the page because we really want it to have a good inking and we're off to a good start but i want some more ink on there i want it to be darker than that now you can see it's starting to darken up nicely and it still looks a little grainy but that'll even out as i come back and just now i'm paying special attention to those areas that appear a little bit light to me. I go over here and down here. And you want to make sure you get all of that inking done before you move on to the next part. All right, so we can put that away. And let's bring in our Daffodil Delight. Now, Linda, you say, what the heck are you using Daffodil Delight for at night? Well, you see this moon reflection we have in the water? The only way you can get that is by throwing a very light color onto that water. And then I'll show you how to blend it out because it is going to look crazy. But let's see, where's my... <laughs> I know I have, there. there's a clean one. It doesn't look clean, but it is clean. So we'll open this up. And here's where you have to get brave. Okay, I'm going to ink this up, rub a little, make sure, yep, like that. Here's where you have to get brave, because we have to take our tape off, number one. So that's why I say you need to be done with the top. But hang on to that tape, because we'll probably need it. And now, I need to decide... I have my moon right there. Obviously, my reflection is going to be right here. And water goes left to right, ripples left to right. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this, and I'm taking it all the way up to the top there, and then now almost to the bottom, just like that. All right, and that's all. That is all I'm going to use that Daffodil Delight for. And it looks crazy. You can say it. I know. I know. But now is where we get to have some fun. I'm bringing back in my tape. This time, we will tape off 
the sky because we're going to be working on some water here. But Linda, you say, are you sure you want to do the water before you put lay in your mountains and your little islands and your trees? Yep, yep, I'm sure, I'm sure. You'll see. Bringing in the Nina Navy. Okay, that was what I used for my Pacific Point. So this is my Knight of Navy. And again, you're just moving this in one direction over the ink. Don't go back and forth because it won't get onto your brayer evenly. Okay, and here we go. I am going to go just to here and back. So I'm going a little bit over the uh, reflection, the daffodil delight, but it's going to work. It's going to work. All right, so that's looking good. Now I'm going to come down here, and this is where my paper really comes in handy because I've got to come off the page quite a bit. But you'll notice I'm consistently going back and forth. I'm not going up and down because our water flows back and forth. At least everywhere I've visited it does. Except, of course, down the drain, then it just kind of goes every which way. But I natter. All right, so this is starting to look good. I do want a little bit more down here at the bottom, though. That's where our water would be darkest. And I do want to get, I'm just turning my roller over a little bit to try and get in that area. Okay. I'm going to stop before, I mean, I could go on all day, right? Right. So that's all the briering that we're going to do. I know it still looks weird, guys, but hang with me because this is where the magic happens. I'm peeling this off. We don't need this tape anymore. And boy, does that look strange, right? Well, first of all, our moon is white. And, you know, you could leave it white if you wanted, but I like a yellow moon. So I'm just taking the ink that was left over on my dauber and doing it in a circle. And my sponge dauber is bigger than the area I masked off, which means I'm going to get this nice little halo effect around my moon. I like that. And then if you decided you needed a little bit more yellow, just go in and touch it up. All right. So we're coming along, but it still looks rather funky. Now we're going to start stamping. I'm going to lay in some mountains. I'm going to lay in some trees. I've got a big old tree to use on the sides because, as you know, Bob Ross used to say, you have to have happy little trees. And I've got some islands and stars for the sky. But I'm going to tell you, no two pictures are going to look alike because when you stamp, you hold your stamp a little differently or you get maybe a little more ink in one place than you did the other. Don't fret about that. You want it to be very individual. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is lay in my mountains. And I'm going to use Tuxedo Black because I want it good and dark. And I like Tuxedo Black. It stamps nicely. And our stamps in waterfront are the distinctive stamps. So as you can see, I've got areas that are darker and areas that are lighter, and that is going to come in handy. All right, so I'm going to decide where my little mountain wants to live here. And when I press down, I'm going to give it an extra beat or two. I really want to make sure that that ink transfers because I've already got a lot of ink on this paper. All right, and so there is my first mountain. Let's do that again. And this guy's going to live right over here. Put him down just a little bit lower. And again, just hold it steady for a moment or two. Okay, and you'll see I've got some of the Pacific Point shining through the mountains there. Don't even worry about it. We are going to come in. We want highlights anyway. So that's it for our mountain. 
Now let's lay in some eyelets. Got to have some nice little islands where our happy little trees live. And this actually works out really well for creating islands. And first of all, I don't want my mountain just rising straight out of the water. So I have to ground it a bit. And I'll do that by using this stamp. And there we go. Now you can see land underneath my mountains. We'll do the same for this one. Okay, so, so far so good, but I need a couple of other little islands. I'm thinking we need one right down here. And I'm even going to have it go into the reflection on the water. Now the reason that I need that there is we still have our happy little trees. And our happy little trees are also going to be black. Everything that is not part of the sky or the water is going to be black. Now, if I just stamp this like that, those trees are going to be too big. It'll throw everything off kilter. So what I'm going to do is just wipe off the bottom half, make my trees as tall as I want, and now I can come in and stamp them down. When you're doing a landscape like this, scale is important because that is the perspective is what helps draw your eye back into the landscape so I'm gonna make my trees even smaller since they're going back here and we'll put a couple right there all right and you can't really see them too much but you will when we're finished last thing that I want to do now that I have some islands and my mountains and some land I'm gonna put a tree along the left hand side again that gives you perspective it's a way of drawing your eye all the way to that moon so back into our Memento Black. And we're only going to do half the tree. All right. I don't really want the trunk playing a big role in this. So just on the edge. And I'm going to lift up. And that looks good, but I need more. And because I don't have the trunk as a part of this, it's very easy for me to continue my tree down as far as I want. Okay, and then I also did just a little bit over here. And actually, it was just a few little branches that were hanging out. Boom, like that. Okay. We're doing good so far, right, gang? Now comes the magic. How do we pull it all together to make it look like everything belongs? This is where our craft white ink comes in. First of all, I did my sky first because I really wanted it to dry as much as possible. And our craft ink is going to sit on top of that Pacific point. And it's not going to be a bright white, but it will still look like stars in the sky. Remember to rotate your stamp a bit and you can put as many stars as you want. I think I'm happy with that. But we're not quite done with our Whisper White. Oh, let me get, oh, there's my paintbrush. Thought I hadn't gotten it out. The paintbrush that I'm using is a flat bristle so it's not round it's flat and it's not going to pick up a ton of the ink matter of fact i might should have re-inked but i'm getting it on there here is where we start with our blending so first of all maybe i want to fade and just make my ripples be a little bit more noticeable than just having that yellow and we can come in and we can just pull some of our night of navy out there as well and on this one i really muted it i think i want to keep it a little bit brighter for this one all right now let's look at our mountains 
Now, we've got moonlight, so we know that our mountains are going to have some little bits of highlights. And again, my flat brush, I just pick some up and be consistent. If your light is coming off this way, that's where you want to put your highlights. But just drag them in there. And don't forget about this guy over here. But see how much definition it is giving those mountains. And you can even make a couple little rocky prominences stand out. All right, so that's looking pretty good. How about our island here? Well, we can hit that with a little bit of white as well. And you'll notice the white is really fading more into the blue, but you're still able to see that it's there. And I might do the same up here. And with the craft white, less is more. So don't completely cover up your dark areas. And I can come back and just keep adding wherever I think I might need it. All right. Now, you want to see how we really get the impact? Watch the magic. I've loaded up my brush with the craft white. And I'm going to come over here to this tree hanging out. And I'm just going to start hitting it. And what I'm doing is I'm touching and pushing, touching and pushing. And that's depositing just enough ink to highlight. I almost can't see where this tree is, but I'm going to keep at it. And as I do, you'll be able to see the different branches on the tree. And that's really all we're going for here. Almost done with that. We got one more branch down here. And now this is going to fade a little bit because you can see my stars and my sky have faded a bit. But you still, if I bring this up, you can see that highlight. Now let's do the same with our little pine trees. Well, these guys need a little bit of love too. And here I am just doing the very minimum, starting at the top and just touching the individual branches of our fur. Just like that. So we got that, we need to come over and do this one. Just briefly giving them a little teeny bit of a highlight. And don't forget to do it out here in the water, too. I'm even going to pull some of this white into that area where I didn't have much color to soften it. All right, so maybe one or two more little dabs, gang. And I think we're going to color this one done. Now, if this bothered you right here, you certainly could come in with some memento and, you know, put in a little bit more of an island. But I actually like the separation that that gives. So I think we're going to stop there. Phew! Got so tied up, I forgot to check and see who all is with us. Hi, Karen. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining. Hello, Cindy. And thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Sandy. And as you can see, like I said, no two are ever going to come out exactly the same because it just depends on where you put things. I think I'm going to hit the sky with a few more stars. Let me bring that down a little bit. When I lived in Colorado and we would go drive up into the mountains, the stars at night were just breathtaking. So much brighter than I saw anywhere else. Okay, away goes our craft ink. And what do you say we put this bad boy together? So we'll get rid of that inky paper. Bring in my card base. There it is. And the mat. And the reason I chose the smoky slate mat, 
I wanted, obviously, if I'm using a Knight of Navy card base, that's dark on dark. So I did want the mat to provide some separation, but I didn't want it to be white or anything bright because that would take away from all of the highlights we have in our landscape. So this will just glue straight down. Oh, new glue bottle. It wants to come a pouring out. Let's see if I can get it on here straight. Because you know me. I don't do straight very well. All right. Ooh, not too shabby. Okay, and then we want a little dimension, of course, so we're going to pop that up to really give it even more depth. Of course, I don't use near as many dimensionals as Mary does, but <laughs> I'll give her a run for her money on this one. This is one I definitely don't want sagging. And you know, this is a perfect card for so many different occasions. It would make a wonderful sympathy card. Ah, it's a great masculine card, but it's just a thinking of you card as well. Maybe you have friends that like to go camping a lot. You know, how fun might that be to give to them? Now I get to take off all these backings. Found one in the dog's food bowl the other day. Don't even ask me how it got there because it was all the way in the other room. As um, Commandant Clink used to say, or what was, no, it was Schultze. I know nothing. I don't know if you guys ever watched Hogan's Heroes. It was very, very funny. At least in my day it was. Some of the new comedy, I just don't get anymore. <laughs> but give me I Love Lucy or Hogan's Heroes. WKRP, remember that one? That was a classic. All right, pardon my head if it gets in the way, but I really want to try and keep my streak going for putting things on at least semi-straight. There we go, folks. That is our card. Now you certainly, there's great room here if you want to put a sentiment. Um, I typically don't put a sentiment on a card until I know who it's going to, so I can make sure that um, it is appropriate. Because this is a Knight of Navy card base, definitely want to cut a piece of uh, Whisper White, four by five and a quarter for the inside. And you certainly could stamp on this, as a matter of fact. I think I'm going to stamp a tree just to continue that. But instead of black, I think I'll do it in Night of Navy. Probably should have kept my paper out. Hang on, guys. Bear with me. I've had this mat three weeks and already got paint on it, so I'm trying to be better. And I'm going to have my little tree hanging out right about there. And I think that'll be good. It almost looks black, doesn't it? That night of navy is a beautifully deep color. All right, we'll glue this on the inside. If you wanted to put some really shiny spots in the sky, you could use some rhinestones, I guess. But I kind of like it the way it is very subtle. So we'll just attach this and again I can put the sentiment in once I know who's going to get it. And there's the card. All done. And I really think I like it with the brighter reflection. I don't know. Sometimes that full moon really can light up water and skies. All right. Do you guys have any questions at all about the inking technique or the colors that were used? Hope I didn't go too fast either. Thank you, Tracy. That's sweet of you to say. Thanks, Karen. Uh, more dimensionals than Mary. Oh, no, you know that's not even possible. Hello, Amy. Thank you for popping in. I really appreciate it. 
All right. Well, that's everything I wanted to go over with you tonight. I will let you get back to your weekend. I hope you have a blessed day tomorrow, and we'll see you next Saturday night. Good night, y'all.